my goodness. Well, hello, everybody. First off, thank you so much for all of the views on that late, uh, the late video I did with, of the John Mayer group. I can't believe how many views it's had. It's absolutely outrageous, but thank you very much. I'm really glad you like it. All the comments are great. Uh, loads of thumbs up and loads of positive response, and that's really, really nice of you all. Um, so I can't thank you enough for that. And hello and welcome to everybody that subscribed now new to my channel. Um, which has just uh, gone up and, uh, and I've reached the 25,000 uh, subscriber mark, which is amazing for my own channel. I've been trying to uh, grow it a little bit um, recently just by putting a little bit more time in to doing my own thing because uh, I think that's really cool just to, to show, you know, just to show how I am on my own instead of when I'm here at Anderson's. I'm still at Anderson's. You know, it's like I can't, and there he is. The guy's right there behind me. Still, can't get away from it. Um, <laughs> so, but I thought, so there's been loads and loads of great sort of ideas that's been asked, can you, can you do loads of different things? And um, one of these things has been, for a long, long time, has been this uh, Purple Rain video I did uh, when Prince passed away. Um, and I did a video, and I did it on this guitar actually. The reason why I haven't played this guitar, this is a Hona, the Prince, and it's about from, I think it's early 80s, and it's completely uh, and utterly uh, original. There's nothing changed, so it's very temperamental. And, and it needs, I've just sprayed it with some, you know, WD40 contact spray, so it's very temperamental. I need to upgrade the tuners, I need to upgrade the bridge, I need to upgrade the wiring, I need to upgrade the pickups. Pickups are right, actually, but I kind of need to, to give it an overhaul, you know, when I touch the cable, it kind of makes noises, so I have to sit still and all of that stuff, but it's a great guitar. I've had it for, I mean, I can't even, it's really cool. It's such a cool guitar. I can't even think how long I've had it for. I've had it forever. I bought it in Copenhagen, you know, when I was like 20. So I've had it for many, many, many years. Uh, and it's a nice guitar, plays really nice, it feels great, but I just need to upgrade it and give it some love. But I thought, since I've had there's so many, you know, things that I could do, and there's so many, uh, the looper thing is one thing that, that seems to be kind of a gen general thing. Can you show us some more loops, how to do stuff? So I thought I'll do that today. So I'm combining uh, this song that I did in the beginning to show you how I would sort of lay down in a simple loop, how you can build a loop and how you can then jam along to it. You know, the backing tracks that I do uh, with Anderton's is, is, is really good. You get like a whole band feeling, you can get through it and it's really cool. And of course you can still go and buy them. There's a volume one and a volume two, they're all on Bandcamp. And uh, there will be a volume three, which I am working on at the moment. Uh, and today I'm wearing a hat. Did I mention that? A really cool hat. It's, I don't know. Uh, thank you very much for Emerson um, for sending that over, and for Mitch. For Mitch, um, we got a little special project we are gonna we're gonna do, but I can't really reveal much about that at the moment. So that will come soon, and it'll probably be on the Anderson channel. Uh, so that's gonna be exciting. So that was a hat, and it's really cool. And I put it on, and now it's still on. Uh, and I'm I'm sporting. Uh, I'm posing for Ario Posen as well. So you can go and buy his T-shirts on his website. See, we all help each other out. That's what we like to do. Just uh, you know, help it going. You know, help us keep doing what we're doing to keep us entertaining you. To buy the backing tracks, buy the T-shirts, buy the CDs. You know, so we can so we can help each other out. Sort of do what we do to entertain you guys. Um, I'm going to look into this whole Patreon site. I don't know if that's something. Go anyway. You know what? Thank you very much again for everybody, and welcome to all the new subscribers, and thank you for all the old subscribers to watch and like and comment. And that's really really cool. Uh, I try to take my best time to answer everything. It's a bit difficult because there is a lot to do. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. So today I've got the Hona, the Prince, which I've had forever and it doesn't come out often because it's very temperamental and I do need to really get it done. So um, it needs a proper uh, see, you know, it needs a proper doing over. Uh, I'm playing to the into the V40 Deluxe. I've got, um, today I'm using a Fender Santa Ana overdrive and a mirror uh, image delay from Fender as well, and I'm running it into the Loop Station RC3 from Bus, uh, and that was all on there in the beginning, and I, I was just kind of controlling with the with the with the volume control. So here's the clean tone.
That's the difficult chord. Uh, and this is the Santa uh, Anna Overdrive. <laughs> Which I really like, it's a good overdrive, I mean the Pugil Pugilist is also an excellent drive and these are just so good value for money. Uh, the um, mirror image delay. Just really it's like one delay. With a little bit of... A um, little bit of reverb on there, cause I, uh, sorry, chorus on there, because I think... Uh, I know Prince uses a little bit of chorus. On, on that chord. So now here's where I have to apologize because when I did the video uh, way back when uh, he passed away, I played the whole song in the key of A. Uh, the original is in B flat. Um, and I remember playing it in, in the key of A because I could do like. Take the old drive off. You know, I could do get get all of those. I can get those loose strings on it, um, and that's why I kind of played it, and then. I so the chords were that I played then was the A. Uh, sus2, A at 9, if you add that it's a sus2, uh, to the F sharp minor 11, so you go, you keep your A like this, and then you, you put your F sharp on the top there, and then you go to the E. If you want to make that sh uh, like a fancy one, you put a 9 on it. So it's like an E7, you, you take an E chord like this, so a normal sort of standard <laughs> uh, bonfire E chord. Uh, and you um, you move the E, so the third third finger. You move that up with the fourth finger that goes up. It can, it can be a bit uh, tricky to take because it's quite a long span between the second and the fourth finger there. But it's a nice chord, and you can sort of add the. You can move your first finger up to the sus. It's quite a. It's kind of a. It can be a bit of a tricky chord to get at first. And then I'll play like a D, which is a D when I, where I move the second finger off, so I've got a loose E string, which I can then move the, uh, the, um, the D down to C sharp instead. So you keep that. You can sort of keep that going all the way through it. Uh, and because it's kind of an A, it's an A minor major uh, scale, but also the, the A ma uh, pentatonic major pentatonic, but it's also the F sharp. You got all of those little um, Hen Hendrix kind of uh, fr trill chords, sort of those. Those two finger kind of stop, uh, double stop. Is it double stops? Maybe it is. Maybe I, I'm. I'm a bit tired today, but there we are. So it's like two fingers on here. You know, like goes from a sus to like a uh, norm. And excuse if the guitar is a little bit out of tune because it does need a bit of a setup. And that's something you kind of have to work with getting that, that flow. 
Mm. I was I would kind of pick some of them, um, you know, hybrid pick it. So use like the a finger and the pick. And then do three at the same time. But all in the key of A major. Um, and of course on, on the D, you can go... You can play a pentatonic sort of bluesy, blues, blues slick scale. That gets you back to the A. Anyway, that's not what I'm going to do today. So if you want to go back, go and check that out. That's, I play all that in the key of A. So A, F sharp minor, 11, E, sus, 9 kind of thing. And then to like a to the D um, with the E string on it. So, but the original, which I think is very important to get across to anyone who wants to play this Prince thing, is that actually what he did was um, he played the first, it's a B flat, right? So it's the, the whole song is in a B flat, but it's not a sus nine as such because there's no root note on the first chord. So there's no B flat on the first chord. Um, and there's no, f so it's only, it's, it's, it's really weird because it's, because you still, you still got a third in there, which is the D and it's actually, it's actually the third that goes in the bass, if you, if you will. So you got the, um, the double B comes up here, but then you got the D, So it's almost like an F sus, but with a D in the bass. And you, as soon as you hear that chord, if I click this in and I go like, and then it's this like hellish chord up here. You can just hear it immediately, you go... Maybe you have to be like soft about it and maybe not too much overdrive. I'll try to take a little bit of drive off because it's just subtle. But because of the, because of the chorus, it kind of gets out of tune a little bit. But you, you, you know what I mean? It's like, it's that, it's just an instant, it's just like instant purple rain. So it's kind of, it's kind of, it's just instant, instant purple rain right there. So, so that chord is basically you, you, uh, you bar over the first, so the, the first fret and the second, uh, and, the, and the first fret on the second string. So the E and the B string, you bar your first finger over. And, um, and then you get your third finger on the third fret on the G string. And then you play from the D, from the loose D. And that, that is your, that's your Prince chord right there. That's your purple rain chord right there. And now, and then what you do is, after that, you, you, when, you've, when you've done that chord, all, all you kind of do is like, right? There's almost like you're moving down to that F chord. So you move down to that F chord, but you keep the D going. And then what you do is you, then you hit, you hit your, third finger on the third fret on the E string and then you go back to to the first chord again still with the open D string ringing All right so it becomes these this sits here still so the first and the second the first finger sits in the first fret over the E and the B string and then it becomes like still you still got your you still got that chord still got that chord you began with but you got the third on the bass on the top you got the G and then what he does is plays a completely normal F, but not a bard. You can do if you want, but I think it's just like this. That's all it is. So it's just, it's just your F chord. Okay. And then here's the tricky one. So this is kind of an E flat nine with a fifth on the top, right? So if you picture, you picture a, a, a bard chord 
E flat, and you do an E flat seven. One of those. You can see that one. So you probably, if you're familiar with bar chords, up in the sixth fret. So you're buying over here. That's how you probably would. That's how you probably normally do that. But you do it with, with the second and the third finger instead. And now here comes the tricky bit for me anyway, because I've got pretty short fingers. Um, your pinky has to go in the tenth fret on G string up there, and it has to. You have to get them going like. Like so. Right, so that is your chord. That takes some that takes some uh, practicing this one. You see what I mean? It takes some practice to get from to get up to there. You know, you can kind of, you can kind of, if you do it like this. So, so instead of going all the way up, you'll kind of, you'll, you'll, you take away this, the, the, uh, the bar over the sixth fret, and you bar over this, the eighth fret instead, and then you do that, and then you'll. But you can't get the. Because then it's kind of ah, oh, then it's like a stretch, like a John Mayer stretch that we can't get into. Uh, I'm sure there's kind of there must there's something up here, but that's even you you kind of need that on the top. So this is kind of the way to take it, and it's just practice. And when you practice it, you you know it it hurts a bit, and then because I've got my thumb kind of all the way under there, which is bent. This is the thing, you know, when you when your teacher tells you to put your thumb behind, um, this is kind of what happens to your thumb. That's my left thumb, that's my right thumb. That's just weird, man. Um, so those are the chords. So you want to do that loop that I did in the beginning. Um, three, So when you got that down, it's really difficult to get that chord. So you'll, you'll have to practice that. Then you can put down a bass. Um, I'll probably roll off to the front again and then make sure I get a little kind of a bassy note. So the first one is the B flat, comes here. And then a G. Then you got your. Oh, sorry. There it goes. So there you got your loop. Um, and if you want to improvise, so I'm just going to stop that. Sorry about this cable. I'm telling you, I have to sit really still with this guitar because it's uh, it's very temperamental. Going, fix me, fix me, fix me, fix me, and play me more. And you know what? I think I actually will because it's really nice. I might get the uh, the uh, fretboard rolled slightly as well. Um, so there you got your loop. Um, when, if you want to solo over this bit, um, now saying all of this, you, what I've done here is the B flat. You can, of course, going and do the loop in the A instead. So it will, it'll, it'll kind of create. It'll, it'll make it a little bit easier to not do these stretches. But I thought, you know, if if you want to kind of see how it's done properly, then it's the B flat thing. Uh, I know I played in the A, but that was because you know I just that was my feeling at the time and. So, anyway, so, and you can do, you can do everything that I did in A, you can do that in B flat. All I'm playing there is still all the... It's, it's all I'm playing. I'm playing a B major scale. I 
and I can play that through the whole thing, right? So if I just go, oh, I can play them on. So that's the, the, the major pentatonic. Then you can add in your major notes. There's so many ways of, of playing the the, um, the, D, the the major scale on top of something because the chord will change, and as soon as it changes to the next chord, that the G the the major scale will just the notes will change and they'll the, the flavor of them will become different, and you kind of see. Uh, when I when I play some notes, if I just play, I'm just going to try to stay in within the um, within the, the the major scale. So here's the here's the thing. So So see what I what I'm doing is I'm actually just playing a, G, a B flat major scale, and I'm flavoring it a little bit at the end there with that bluesy lick. It's kind of a it's just a blues kind of. It's the pentatonic scale basically, because on the on the E flat, it's a dominant. So it's kind of a seven, so it dominates, it wants to go back, and that's when you can... That's kind of how I do it, I'll use it as a little turnaround, a little cheeky turnaround to go back to the... Um... Otherwise from that, it's, it's basically, so if I try to play just the, uh, let's say the, what, what we're calling the G minor pentatonic, which is also the G, uh, the B flat pe uh, major pentatonic. If I play it, in, if I play it in this position, so the third fret, when I got my my B here, so this is what you can do.
bum note there, but it's all right to play those notes. But you play the wrong note, you find, oh, that's not the right notes. And you can certainly hear it when they when they don't fit in, you know. And, and then you go, oh, maybe I should play that next time. It's all right. Um, so there you have it. Uh, those were the chords. The G. The F and that horrible, horrible thing to take. But once you've done it a few times... Or you could play it as I mentioned in the A, like I did in the previous video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video on how to play the chords and how to loop and how to solo over Purple Rain. It is one of my favorite songs. In fact, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite songs of all time. It's such a great song in the way he's written that. And again, like the John Mayer song, it's, it's really, really, it's really four simple chords and it just, it just works so well the way that the whole song is put together and the way the lyrics are and and the way the whole thing goes and that's i'm a big fan of that that people can drizzle that matic over some chords that you know people are suing each other left right and center for oh those five chords i invented those four or five chords like i mean if you can play four or five chords you can probably play most songs that's ever written um so i don't know what that's all about you know competition is not a bad thing i think if you like see another guitar player and you think, oh, he's really good, and, and uh, or either a lot of people think, oh, I can't play that, I'm going to put my guitar away and I'm going to play again, and, and other people go, oh, I'm, I, I'm as good as that, and you know, you've got all of this stuff, and the, what you really should do is go, he's really good, I think I'm going to get inspired by this guitar player and go, you know what, I can learn something from this guy, and I think he's great, and good for you, and I'm going to take that lick and I'm going to learn that thing and uh, and then then practice it and you if you really want to do it um, then then do it you know music is a great thing and you know I cannot go a day without me playing my guitar and that's because I've there's something that is just so important to me to do um, and it's really nice that all of you guys that you know I'm not just sitting at home that you guys appreciate it as well and I really appreciate that so anyway that was my Hone of the Prince. I haven't had this out for ages. I don't think I've played it since I did that last video. So that must, there's over two years now. It's been out like once or something for like, or twice for a photo. And that's it because it is very sentimental. So I need to get everything off and everything done. Uh, Fender Sand Anna Overdrive, Fender Mirror Image Delay, Bus Loop Station, Victory V40 Deluxe. My name is Pete and thank you for watching. Hope you like the hat. Um, I don't wear a hat much, but I've, I think it's pretty cool. And uh, Ario Posen, always near my heart. So there you are. <laughs> I'll see you very soon on either this channel or on the Anderton's channel, or maybe another channel. I don't know. Maybe I'll pop up someplace in the future nearby. And if there's anything, please put questions and uh, all that stuff in the, in the comment section below. And I'll try to get around to do one video a week. That's my kind of aim. I'm trying to get it sort of the end of the week, Thursday, Friday, depending on how busy it is. But... Um, Thank you very much for watching and let me come into your living rooms with uh, these ramblings of guitar stuff. Um, I'll see you next time. Take care.